the WrestleMania music video. Dude, I saw this video starts playing, and they've had they've had that WrestleMania music for years at this point. Mm-hmm. And uh, they start playing this music, and uh, then they start. There's some of the wrestlers are talking about their upcoming matches at Mania, and I'm just kind of watching it like whatever. And also, I'm like, that actually almost rhymed. And I watched a little further, and it suddenly struck me. Wait a second. They have made a rap video. Yes. Featuring the big boss man. Hacksaw Duggan. Hacksaw Jim Duggan. The nasty boys. And it was full stop. Wait a second. (laughs) I rewound this fucking video. I watched this video twice. This video was so fucking horribly awesome. Thank you. It was horribly, horribly awesome. Like... It was so awesome and so horrible. It was. Which was not the only thing on this show like that, I might add. <laughs> no. yeah. This fucking music video was just like so 90s WWF and like, you know, whenever the word WrestleMania would be sung, they'd have WRD out of there really fast, mm-hmm. looking fucking horrible. And then one time it was like off the screen because their fucking machine was all fucked up or something like that. This is just so horrible, but I fucking loved it i loved it am i the only one no no you're golly no, I, I i it was indescribably awful but i couldn't stop smiling <laughs> yeah right. it was like the greatest awful video ever my favorite line is when hacksaw says when we get in the ring i'll show you how to get beat up <laughs> well it rolls off the tongue <laughs> yes so it does go on for a long long time but, Not long uh, enough. <laughs> it's just like must-see stuff. If you don't know this WrestleMania song, uh, that's probably most famous in the Attitude Era. They it's used Linda's it music. For Linda McMahon's yes. music. If yes. You're, but Linda stole it from this video here. Wow. I have a recap of the Money Incorporated Mega Maniacs program. I have seen the entire thing, so I skipped all this. And then we have Money Incorporated versus Jerry Sabin and Reno Riggins. Oh, my main man, Reno Riggins. Yes. Yeah. Sabin, better known in Jim Crockett promotions as the Italian Stallion. Yep. Cleverly disguised here, wearing his boots with the Italian flag and the trunks that say Italy. God, what a fucking team. A dream like, team. If they weren't just such jobbers, <laughs> like Italian Stallion and... Uh, Reno Riggins. Reno Riggins. Fuck, what a team. I'd come out of retirement right now for a match with those two guys. They yeah, were not the only Hall of Fame jobbers in the show either. There's mm-hmm. more to come. Uh, that being said, the highlight of this match is when DiBiase backdrops Reno about 40 feet into the air, and Reno comes down and goes, feet, then ass, then head. Yeah. That's not how it's done. That looked so miserable. And DiBiase finished him off with the Million Dollar Dream from there. This Mega Maniacs promo. Bro, what in the absolute <laughs> holy fuck was this promo? What was this? <sighs> So I want you to uh, recap it. All I, right. I all I can, I would imagine the Hulkster smoking a joint. No, on the, on the beach. No, no way. Something Greg. much and, stronger. Yeah, we're and, talking yeah. some big time psychedelics. This was narcotics. Yeah, yeah. And, and crafting this promo to. Oh my gosh, bro! So, if so, you if you were if you were no no. So before we get to the promo itself, we were talking about that fans were into everything in the show. You ever heard of ayahuasca? I have. <laughs> I mean, that's what I'm thinking. I've also heard heard this fucking promo. Yeah. Before we even get to the promo, I want to mention how we were talking about the fans and everything. The Mega Maniacs come out, Real America is playing, and there's grown women dancing Mm -hmm. to Real American. That's a catchy tune. Never occurred to me that this is a a dance song. I saw grown men rapping to the WrestleMania theme, so I've seen it all, dude. I guess so. So they were, they were paid, to be honest, to be fair. So first of all, they don't do this anymore, I don't think, ever, but they have the, the promo's not in the ring or on the stage. They just have a platform, mm-hmm. like off, off to the side. That's what they used to do with superstars all the time. Yeah. Yes. So they put up on this platform. But they, they'd be up on the platform, but they usually shoot them from a, from the normal angle. True. They bring the, the platforms, they appear, and the camera dude gets down on the ground on one knee and looks up. And Hogan looks straight down at the camera, like he is God above speaking down to the people. So what did I get from this Hogan promo? Please. Uh, he was Tell watching. He, he was hanging on Venice Beach watching Raw. Saw what happened to Brutus. I find that hard to believe, by the way. That, that part's very difficult. In, in 1993. Yeah. Uh, just, yeah. He stole Brutus's bike 
almost drove it into the ocean, Mm -hmm. put his ear in the sand, and he heard fans praying for Brutus. After he smashed his face in, you see. Mm. So he was so concerned, he took Brutus's bike, drove it from Venice Beach to New York City, where he went to the, the Ramada Inn and found Brutus watching the Three Stooges. I'm not making this up. <laughs> I presume that was happening. I, it's possible. Yeah, sure. I mean, you don't make something like that up, dude. So Brutus says Brutus has a mask on now, the protective face mask. He's talking about they've tested it, and Hogan's dropping big legs on it. He's totally fine. Didn't feel a scratch. So that's anything. how they tested it. He put on a mask, laid on the ground, and said, Hulkster, drop that damn leg on me. Yes. Uh. Jimmy Hart, who is supposedly a babyface manager now, Says they're going to have new t-shirts and new video games and new posters because they're going to be the tag team champions soon. We go back to Brutus, who I guess because he's, I guess he's the barber still. He had haircut plans for Money Incorporated. He's talking about walking the aisles at Kmart looking for hair dye. And I'm pretty sure at this point Hogan legit lost it. He like covers his mouth and is chuckling. But he must one up Brutus and one up Brutus he does. I did not transcribe the entire thing, but he's back in Venice Beach. He's fishing off the pier with his bare hands, as Mm -hmm. one does. Mm -hmm. He catches hammerhead sharks. He takes these hammerhead sharks to Las Vegas. He throws them in the pool at Caesar's Palace, where he has also thrown sea urchins and mermaids. Mermaids. He has thrown mermaids and sea urchins and sharks in the pool <laughs> at Caesar's right. Palace. So what they're going to do, he says, we're going to take those tag team titles from Money Incorporated. We're going to take them over to these hammerhead sharks and fasten them around their heads and through their mouths so they can't bite anyone. Then everyone will get in the pool and have a big pool party. All the sun, ba- the bathing beauties, the lady Hulkamaniacs, we're going to get a crate of suntan lotion. And they're going to have an even tan from head to toe. And, like, eventually it ends. Gene just buries his face in his hands. He can't believe what he has just heard. Hogan is flexing. I will say this. Hogan was lean here, man. Hogan. Well, yeah. Yes, because it's that era. God, this was the weirdest fucking thing I ever saw. If you go back and watch this promo, which I don't recommend, just keep your eyes <laughs> do. on... Just keep your eyes on Mean Gene the whole time. Oh. When you can crack Mean Gene, you're a master of your art. So I don't know if this made me want to see WrestleMania. No, of course it didn't. (laughs) But it was memorable. It was different. It was not boring. It was a Hulk Hogan promo. Well, yes, but on on the extreme end of Hulk Hogan promos. Very, very few Hulk Hogan promos can match this for being a Hulk Hogan promo. It is Wrestling Observer Live today. I'm Oreo the Orca. Do you have a blowhole rating system? Like, if you're really excited about a match, it gives you yeah, six this, squirts? Yeah, this match was, was uh, two and three-quarter holes, if you must know. So I was watching this show, and they had a bunch of videos for this Liv Morgan about how, oh, my whole life I've been a wrestling fan. Oh, I'm going to win my first title ever. There's children cheering and going, oh, you know what I'm saying? Okay. I do indeed. <laughs> hey, Danhausen, can you hear us? Yes, can you hear Danhausen? Hey, look at that holy hey. mother of God. Look what we've done here. You broke a leg. Is that true? Uh, it was broken in half, snapped in two. The doctor said it was a tibia and a fibula. Uh, I'm a whale and not a doctor, but is it not a fibula and not a fibia? A fibula? What I know. Perhaps what? the doctor lied to Danhausen. You know, Danhausen, if you were a whale, you wouldn't have broken your leg. This is true because whales don't have legs. What did you grow up watching as a little evil man? Kane ripping off the door when he debuted. Yes. How old were you, Dan Helsen, when that match took place? Oh, about, uh, what was that, 1997, so about 700 years old. Oh. Also, one time Dan Helsen had Dolph Ziggler's theme song as his alarm and it went off in class. <laughs> no, he didn't. Yes, it's true. Dan Helsen likes Dolph Ziggler. You like Dolph Ziggler? He's good matches. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, 
the Mad Men podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.